What's going on YouTube? It's the Spectrum here. And I've got some news to tell you. This is going to be my last Yugi tubing video. So, uh, anyone who's just subscribed to me um, for Yu Gi Oh! Uh, I'm sorry. But, um. I just don't want to do it anymore. I'm, I'm, my channel's still be around. I'm going to just do Minecraft from now on. Um, because. It's. The, like, the thing is, is that I, I like the game, I like Yu-Gi-Oh! Let's, let's um, you know, get that mistaken. I'm not quitting the game, I'm just quitting the YouTube team, because every time I, I go on a YouTube video now, it, it, apart from about four people who put up regular content, every YouTuber is acting as if their word is God, that they know everything about the game, you know, they're just going around pretending that they know everything, and... They come up with these really random choices that you can't prove. So, I mean, that was annoying to begin with. And then just the general community on YouTube is so, so balls. I mean, I know all my subscribers, all you guys watching this are probably like, do we count in that community? And I, I guess so. I'm not saying everyone is like this, but from what I've seen... All you have to do is get a ruling wrong on a video or something. All you have to do is like answer a guy's question and he'll try and tear it out of you. And I was having this, an argument with this guy yesterday about a ruling and okay, so it was a really, really dumb question to do with Minecraft and Monster Reborn. And he, uh, he comes back like rifling all this stuff about I'm being wrong. I was like, well, if I'm wrong, then why did you ask that question in the first place? And, you know, he, he just didn't... Uh, it was it was ridiculous. And they had, like, these random people come in and arguing as well about complete random crap. And I said, well, why are you getting so wound up about a children's card game? And this one guy said, you must be a re you're a really dumb player because apparently it's not a children's card game. Okay, so I'm a dumb player for saying that it's a children's card game. It is a children's card game. Look at what Upper Deck does to the naming. Look at how they market themselves. They would not base the cards on the anime. I mean, not Upper Deck, Konami. They didn't. They, you know, they wouldn't market cards on the anime if it wasn't for the fact that they want little. They want kids who are persuaded by the anime, making them look good, to buy them. That's the reason they do it. That's the reason why all packs have like a cover card from the anime on it, and not the best card in the pack. If Star Strike Blast had not been based on the anime, it would have had Got Bulb or Formula Synchron as the cover card, not Shooting Star Dragon. Had uh, Dawless Revolution been based on uh, just the players, like the best cards the players wanted, it would have had Pop Duality on the front of Solemn Warning. It would have not had um, Dracula Quest. Like that's the thing. They they aim it at the kids who are being persuaded by this stuff. The starter decks. Look at it. They always put you know the, the most you know the st the main characters cards in the starter deck because the kids think it's going to be good and they market it as such just because the game is played by you know people who are 20 and up doesn't mean it's not a children's card game the only reason that the majority of the players are that age is because they can afford the card because this game is extremely expensive so i'm just sitting there i'm just sitting here at home thinking why am i arguing with people when i just don't have to do it it's just ridiculous. I'd rather learn my Yu Gi Oh stuff either by hand, as in, you know, in experience, by practicing, or from people who actually know what they're talking about. Because I've had some better tips off people who have actually, like, I've watched do well in tournaments than people on YouTube. So, yeah, my rant is over now. It, yeah, my, my rant is over. This will probably be the last Yu Gi Oh tubing video I actually do. There may occasionally be something like when I'm hanging out at locals and stuff, um, occasional deck updates, um, when I make something major, but I mean this is the deck I'm going to be running for the majority of this format now. So let's take, this is obviously fairy, so let's take a look. Okay, we've got three Hyperion, three Earth, one Jupiter, three Venus, three Mystical Shine Ball, two Herald of the Orange Light, uh, two Zerodeus, two Christia, one Honest, two DD Crow, one Gauze, one Blackless Soldier, 
spells. We've got two sentry in the sky, one mind control, the triple MST, heavy storm, dark hole, monster reborn, book of moon. And then traps, we've got two bottomless trap hole, that's a proxy mind crush there, so we've got two mind crush, and a trap dust shoot, which, if you can see, which you can't see because there's no light, there's not much light in here, it's dual terminal, which is awesome. Anyway, now if you're wondering, it's a 24 monster count, 10 spell count, and 6 trap count. First off, the monster lineup. Hyperion, you all know why. Earth is Stratos, you should have it in there. One Jupiter, because I don't find it that useful anymore. Uh, but I think it's been trumped by Venus. The reason being is, uh, before XCs came out, Jupiter was really, really good. Uh, he gets a boost, and then if Sentry in the Skies on the field, you get to bring back, uh, uh, you know, another fairy, and you know, it's it's a one for one because you discard a card and all that. However, Venus, not only does it get you a plus three because you get some three Mystical Shine Balls from your deck, you then exceed two of them into Getch Getch Gen Tetsu, and that boost, you that means you've got two monsters on the field. One's got two K Attack, and the other one's got two two Defense. And then you've got a random mystical shine ball on the field that you might want to use for later. Then you know you normal summon Earth next turn. Search, I don't know, a Hyperion if you've got Sandra in the sky on the field. Sink into Ancient Sacred Holy Wyvern, which I haven't actually got yet. I will be looking for that. But you know, and the deck makes you know Venus is much much better. Venus with Gacha Gacha Gentetsu is already good as it is. Add into the fact that you can, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You can sort, of, you can, you know, if you have two on the field, which is very, very likely. If you're open with two and the first one's two K attack, you sell out another one. You know, bought them for four thousand or two thousand or whatever. However, however many attacks you get in, next season to Levia, and bring back some remove from play monsters. I mean, the the card is is really, really good. I'd rather run three Venus and have a chance of drawing it than just. Jupiter. So, you know, that's it. Herald the Orange Light over Effect Villa because it just negates and destroys the effect, not just negate it, so that's much better. You know why Zero Dias is in there. Chris is amazing, Honest is amazing. And then we got these darks in here, DD Crows and Gauze, because Blaster Soldier wins games. You almost have to have him in there. And, you know, DD Crow's always live. You can just ditch it whenever you want to. So it was, it, I think it was a really, really good idea. It was sort of like putting a Fet Veilers for light in a dark deck. The way I looked at it, and Gauze is just Gauze. What happens a lot is you'll have zero back row because you don't want to set all of these face down. Maybe a Sanctuary in the Sky. And your opponent makes like a Black Rose play or something like that. You know, and they're always keen to get the field spell off the field. And then you just drop Gauze on them and like, ah, Gauze. So... Gore's good in this deck, and then BLS, like I said, wins games. Now, there's not a lot of draw force in this deck. What I was thinking of doing is taking out Zeridius and Sentry in the Sky, and replacing it with uh, yeah, Cards from the Sky and Pot of Duality. I was thinking about doing that, but I'm really not too sure. The thing is, is that not only does Zeridius deck thing, but then it gives more such ability to Earth, and it's it's like a um, MST target, really, and it, it you know it triggers off the heavy storms and stuff like that. So I think it's good in there. It's just because we got such a large monster count that I would consider taking those two out to put in more spells. But so far as I've seen, the deck's doing really really well. Uh, in playtesting, it's just been held back by me, I guess, in certain cases. Um, in terms of changes. Like, I don't want to take Sanctuary in the Sky out, because it limits Earth's search ability. He can only, you know, Earth, without Sanctuary in the Sky, can only search for Jupiter and Venus. And once you've got one Venus, you don't need the others. So, I'd rather have the deck thinning of Earth and Zerodius in a... It's, it's a 40-card deck, let's not get that wrong. So, you know, it's not as if it's going to get clogged. Basically, everything here is live the minute you get it. Hyperion, Jenny going to search it out with Earth, so that's instantly live. Jupiter, you know, is live. Venus is live. 
Orange light, you're always going to draw like a dead Venus. Uh, that's a good reason to search out Venus with Earth, actually, to, for Herald of the Orange Light Fodder. Herald is always live. Zerodeus is always live. Chris is easily live. You've got Honest, Zerodeus, Herald, Mystical Shine Ball. They're all dumpable. Gets into the graveyard really fast. Honest, always live, really. DD Crew, definitely always live. Gores, uh, uh, live the majority of the time. And BLS, so long as you got DD Crow into the graveyard, you it's live constantly. So, I mean, the majority of the monsters are live. In terms of traps, Bottomless is still good, I think. You do need some kind of monster removal power, I, I believe. Two Mind Crush, because it's freaking awesome. And then Trap Dust you, because it's also freaking awesome. So that's the main deck. Extra deck is kind of irrelevant at the moment, because it's not finished. Just know that there's like, basic staples in there. And I suggest running Ancient Sacred Hurley Wyvern. Just because uh, there's always that case where, you know, first turn, summon Venus, you know, summon three mystical shine balls, exceeding to catch catch again Tetsu. Your opponent goes, ah, oh, set, set back row, next turn you MST, summon Earth, search Hyperion, whatever, you know, if you've got Sanctuary in the Sky on the field, it, you know, synchro into Ancient Sacred Holy Wyvern, gets a power boost. Then if you manage to swing for some life point damage, it, it, you know, silly, silly plays, in my opinion. So that's the deck. Thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, you know, the if I had tour guides, I'd probably take out Christia, Honest, DD Crows, Ghouls. Um, I don't know. Christia's becoming more useful to me now, I think. So I don't know about that, but uh, we'll have to see. Anyway guys, this was my last Yugi TV video. Uh, rate, comment, subscribe, be awesome, and deuces.